I just finished building out a CSS clone of Discord. As you can see, it pretty much has all the features of Discord. You can even tab around and all this different stuff. This is actually the final project for my CSS course that I'm currently reworking. So if you're interested, I have it linked down in the description for you. It's completely updated. I just released it and I currently have a sale going on for the course. So if you're interested in learning CSS, I highly recommend checking that out. But the thing that I found really interesting about this Discord clone is actually how this search bar works inside of Discord because it's really quite interesting. First of all, when you click on it, you can see it expands. And also when you type inside of it, you can see right here, this search icon swaps between a search icon and an X icon. And you can even tab over to that X icon because it's an actual interactable button. And this is something I found really interesting. And you can actually do all of this using just CSS. So in this video, I want to show you how Discord actually built out this search bar, or at least how I would build it if I was doing it, because I think it's a really interesting thing. And I think it teaches you a lot of really cool and interesting CSS techniques. <laughs> Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the main thing we want to focus on with this search input is the fact that it grows when we focus on it and that when we type inside of it, this X is going to actually appear and the search icon is going to disappear. We want to do all this with just CSS and nothing else at all. So in order to do this, I just have some really simple boilerplate code that we have started. You can see I have two boxes. These are just these gray elements. I have our search input, and then I have another box. And if we look at the actual code for all of this in our styles, you can see I have a few different styles for our colors. These are just the Discord specific colors we're gonna be using. I then have my body set to that background color. Same thing with my text. I have my font family set and I removed the margin for my body. Inside of my index HTML, I have a row class, which is essentially just a flex box container with a gap and some margin, so it's easier for you to see. And then finally, each of my boxes have a width of 30 pixels and a specified background color. This is just to emulate different things that are around my search input so we can see what happens when it grows and shrinks to see exactly how it's working. Now, the very first thing we need to do is to brainstorm how we want to actually solve this particular problem. So the easy thing to do is to increase the width because essentially, as soon as we focus on this element, we can use that focus style to determine that the width is going to be larger or it's going to be smaller. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we'll come in here, we'll add a class. We'll just call this input. It really doesn't matter what we call this and then we're going to go to our styles and at the bottom we can select that input and we can give it a specified width now inside of discord they specifically give this a width of around 9 em if we give that a save that is essentially about the size of the discord box and then what we can do is we can say input and we want to do this whenever we have focus on this particular element then we want to change the width and in our case it's going to be 15 em that's about how large discord is so you can see when i click on that it's instantly growing to be that larger size now, in order to make this a animation, we can come in here and add a simple transition. We'll say that it's going to transition the width property over 0.15 seconds. Give that a quick save. And now you can see I get an animation on that width property where it's actually growing. And if you wanted, we could slow this down to like 0.25 and now it makes it a little bit slower of an animation. And I believe 0.25 is essentially exactly what Discord is using. So we'll keep it at that. So this is already pretty easy and great for us to get started with. This was the easy part though. The next thing I want to do before I move on to the more difficult part of the search section, like the disappearing of the icons, is to make it so that all of our colors line up exactly as we want them to. So we can specify the background color for this, which is going to be our background color dark. And if we scroll up here, you can just see I have a bunch of different shades of black and gray, essentially the Discord colors. I got them directly from Discord. So now you can see we get that color showing up. Also, I want to change my text color here to be my foreground color, just like that. And then finally, we're gonna get rid of any border on this. So we can say border, get rid of that. And there we go. We can see that already looks quite a bit better. Now I do wanna mess around with my outline to make that look a little bit more like Discord as well because it has a very blue outline. So the first thing we need for that is our outline color. This is again, a color that's pretty much exactly what the color inside of Discord is. It's just a bright blue color. And then what we can do is we can say dot input and we can specifically do it whenever our focus is visible. And we first of all want to remove our outline. So we'll just say outline none. We can put that on our input itself. That gets rid of the white color around it. So now you can see there's no white color around it. And we want to add our own. So we could use the outline property, but in Discord, I believe they use a box shadow. So we're going to use a box shadow here, which is a really easy way to add essentially a glow or border effect to an element without changing the size of that element, because adding a border will generally change the size of an element. So for our box shadow, we essentially want it to act like a border. So we don't want to offset it in the X or Y direction. We also don't want to give it any type of blurring effect. Instead, we just want to give it a width. In our case, the width is going to be 0.25 REM and we'll give it that outline color just like that. Now, if we give it a save and we select this element, you can see now we get that nice big chunky blue outline. 
Obviously, we should probably throw in some type of border radius, but that's already looking a lot like Discord. So to make this look a little bit better, we'll add in that border radius 0.25 EM. We'll add in a little bit of padding. In our case, 0.375 EM is essentially what Discord is going to be using. So we get that a save. You can see that already looks a lot more like the Discord input. Technically, the Discord import is also a slightly smaller font size. We'll do 0.875 just like that. So now we essentially have it looking exactly like the normal Discord input. The next step is just to make sure our placeholder color is correct. And inside of CSS, we actually have the ability to style our placeholder by using the colon colon placeholder. And here we can, for example, change the color. In our case, we want it to be the foreground color dark. Now, if I give that a save, it's going to be the correct color for Discord. Now, the final thing I want to do before we move on to the fun part is going to be making sure that if our CSR user has disabled animations, essentially they don't want as much animations, we can make sure we respect that. So we can add in a media query for prefers reduced motion. And if they have that set to reduce, well, then our input should have a transition of none. And now that way, if our user has these animations disabled, which we can emulate by coming into the inspect tab here, what we can do is we can type in control shift P and search for render. You can see show rendering. And if we scroll down, we'll eventually find the emulation for prefers reduced motion. We can set that. And now you can see when I click on this, there's absolutely no animation showing on for this. So that allows us to actually respect the user's wishes. And anytime you're dealing with animations, I highly recommend you always make sure to disable them in the case of preferring reduced motion. Now, something else about the Discord import that's important to know is that whenever there's text inside the input and you unfocus it, it actually stays at this larger size until you remove the text and unfocus and then it shrinks down. Right now, our input does not do that. So for example, if we type in here and we unfocus, you can see it shrinks back down. We wanna make sure that if there is text inside of our input, it stays at the full size. This sounds like it'd be something you'd need JavaScript for, but it's actually relatively easy to do with CSS. We can select our input element, and actually we can just add it directly to this selector that's changing our width. So we'll say dot input, and we have the ability to select an element based on if the placeholder is shown. So in this case, this will give us a width of 15 EM anytime our placeholder is shown. Well, in our case, we want to do this every time the placeholder is not shown because that means there's text inside the element. So we can replace this with a not selector that says whenever there is not a placeholder being shown, then what we want to do is make the width 15 EM. So now if I type inside of here and select away, you can see my width stays at that larger size. And if I remove my text and unselect it, now it shrinks back down. So now comes the fun part of actually adding in these different icons. So unfortunately with input elements, since they are an inline self-closing element, they don't actually have the ability to use before and after tags or anything like that. You can't relatively position elements inside of an input. So we actually need to wrap this inside of some type of element such as a div. And this div just allows us to put other things like icons directly inside of our input. So what we can do is we can say that we have a class here and we want this to be our search wrapper. And then we can specify, for example, different SVGs or buttons and so on that we want to put directly inside of here. So I already have these SVGs directly in my project. You'll be able to get this source code from GitHub so you can download these exact SVGs if you want. They're essentially the Discord search and X button icons, or you can use whatever other icons you want. But we can copy this search icon directly into our element here. There we go, we now have our search icon. We don't need all of this stuff. For example, actually we do need all of it, but we need to add a class name. For example, search icon. And then I can do the exact same thing with our X icon right here. I'll just copy that over. And in this one, I'm actually going to put inside of a button because I want this to be selectable. So we can come in here with a button. We can add in that search and we'll call this one a class of X icon, just like that. So now we have the ability to select these two different elements. And actually, I think I'm gonna put the class on my button instead. So we'll say class X icon. And we can remove that class from down here. And again, the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to make sure my button has all of my different stylings on it, just so that works a little bit better. So now we have our two different icons in place. Obviously, they're not positioned correctly. So we need to specify some styles for our search wrapper, just like that. For example, we first want to position LA everything relatively inside of there. And that's pretty much all we need to do with our search wrapper. The next thing we need to do is deal with our search icon and our X icon. And we want to make sure these are positioned correctly. So we're gonna use a position of absolute to position these elements where we want. And we also need to specify what size we want them to be. So in my case, I'm gonna set them to one REM width and height. There we go. So that essentially gives me the correct size element that I want. And then we can just position them in the location that we want as well. So first let's go ahead and we'll set the right to 0.25 REM. That's going to essentially put them inside the search input. And you can see that there's a little bit of space on the right hand side. The next thing I wanna do is get the top position, which I want to be dead center. So I'll do 50%. 
and then I'll translate them upwards 50% by using this negative 50% translate. That's going to put this in the exact dead center. Now, the reason that it looks like a checkbox here, it's actually a button. It's just because my X icon is inside of there and it's, it's completely hidden because of the color choices. So let's go ahead and actually specify the color for these icons. This is gonna be foreground color dark. There we go, so now we have the correct color. And specifically for my X icon, I just wanna get rid of all of the default button styles. So actually, I'm just gonna select my buttons across all the buttons in my application. I'm gonna say all, set that to unset. That'll remove all the default styles for a button. And I'm also going to specify that the cursor should be pointer, just so that way when I hover over the X, I essentially get the ability to select it. So now I have my two elements directly overlapping each other in the location that I want. Now you're probably thinking all I need to do is hide one and show the other and then swap which one's hidden and which one's shown. But that actually gives us a few problems if we do that. First of all, animating between display none and display block or whatever, technically you can do it with some advanced CSS that's kind of experimental, but it's not as easy to do different animations to make something show up and disappear. Also, if I'm on my search input, we'll zoom it out a little bit, and I wanted to use the tab key to select my button input, which right now it's selecting even though there's no outline. So let's add a quick outline to it. So we'll come up here and we'll say button focus visible as well. So that way you can see up in my search input and I tabbed onto this X input. I want to be able to tab onto that even if there is no X input shown on my page at all, I wanna be able to still tab onto that particular thing. So instead of using display none and so on, we're actually going to be using an opacity trick just to make them disappear, but make it so you can still click on the particular icon if you want to. So we'll come in here and by default, we'll set the opacity to zero. Now to make it so you accidentally can't click the X button when it's hidden, we'll set pointer events, whoops pointer events to none, and that makes it so it doesn't interact with any clicking events at all. You can still tab onto this particular element even though it's hidden. For example, if I'm here and I click tab, I'm actually highlighted over my X element right now. Even though you can't see it, I'm technically tabbed onto that element. To make it so that it's hidden for tabbing as well, we can just specify the visibility of hidden. And now when I click tab, it's bringing my tab input all the way up into here instead of actually selecting that X input itself. So I'm able to not tab onto it, I'm not able to click on it, and I can't see the particular element. So it's pretty much entirely hidden inside of the browser. Now I'm gonna do a few things just to clean this up a little bit. So for example, I'm gonna specify a border radius of 0.25 REM. And the reason I'm doing that is just so, let me just get rid of a lot of these styles here. There we go. That way when I tab onto my X input, you can see it has a circle around it instead of just a square box. That's all that that is there for. So with that done, we can essentially move on to making it so that we actually style these things to animate in and animate out. So we need to have different selectors for our search icon versus when we want to show this versus when we don't want to show this. So we already know how we can do this based on this placeholder showing. So we can get our input, for example, just like this, and we can select it based on our placeholder showing. But what I wanna do is I wanna specifically select the element of this search icon based on the input actual styles. So I'm gonna be using the parent selector so I can go based off of this search wrapper. That is the has element. So what I can do is I can say dot search wrapper has, and I wanna check if it has an input that has a placeholder shown because that means I want to show it. So we'll get rid of this not because if I'm showing the placeholder, I want to show the search icon. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the search icon itself. And inside here, what I wanna do is I wanna change the opacity to one. And I wanna come in here, I wanna enable pointer events. So we'll say pointer events all, and we wanna make it visible. So we'll say visibility is visible. So now just by doing that, we should be seeing our search icon, but it's not showing up. This is because I put one too many colons in here. This should be one colon before placeholder shown. And now you can see my icon is showing up. And if I were to type something in there, you can see immediately it disappears. Now currently it's showing an X icon right here. This is because of the default browser behavior. We want to hide this X icon. So in order to hide that, we're gonna use some code. I'm gonna paste down what this code is. This is essentially a way to clear this. So if you're on Internet Explorer, which pretty much no one uses, but if that case still happens, you can use this MS clear and MS reveal and just set the appearance to none to completely remove it. Now, if you're on Chrome, then we have this WebKit search and you can have a bunch of different ways to deal with it and just set the appearance to none. And again, that's going to hide this particular element so it no longer shows up. So it should hide it from all browsers. The other alternative is you could change this to a text input instead of search. And again, that X should not show up. But in our case, this is a search input. So we're gonna leave it as a search input. And now you can see that that X has been removed. So we can add in our own X input to do all the fancy styling. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to transition between all of these different styles. So we wanna make sure we set up a transition here. Oops, let me spell that properly, transition. And we want to transition on a few different properties. So I'll say transition property. And we wanna transition on opacity. And we also wanna translate on the rotate property as well. 
So I'm gonna come in here with a transition duration. We'll do 0.15 seconds, just like that. And now what is going to happen is you can see that this is essentially fading in and out when I'm clicking on this. We can even make it a much longer animation so it's easier to see, we'll say 0.5 seconds. So when I type something, you can see it disappears. And then when I untype, you can see it highlights itself back in. Now, right now it's instantly disappearing, which is not quite what we want. The reason for this is because we have visibility hidden right here. So that's immediately hiding the element, kind of like if you use display none. We'll come back to fixing this in a little bit because we might actually not even need to fix this based on the way the animation is set up. So the next thing we wanna do is deal with this rotating. So by default, I'm gonna set this to be a rotate of 90 degrees because in that Discord animation, they kind of rotate and fade in. So by default, it's going to rotate away. And then when it essentially is not there, it's going to rotate into place. So let me just give that a quick save. And when I bring this back, we should see some rotating happening, but we don't. And that's because here, I didn't set a rotate to zero. So now it's gonna animate between those two different rotate values. So if you see, I type and then remove it, we still see it's not quite rotating. That's again, because this should say rotate zero degrees. I don't know why they force you to put degrees, but they do. So now we can come in here, type something and remove it. And now you can see that it's rotating and fading in, which is exactly what we want. Now we can work on doing the exact same thing for the X input. So I'm gonna actually copy this selector because it's gonna be almost exactly the same, but for our X icon. And here we only wanna do it if the placeholder is not shown, because if we don't have a placeholder, then we want to show the X input instead of the actual search icon. So now if I type, you can see my X rotates in. And when I delete, you can see that my circle rotates in for my search icon. So it's already looking really good. And if we speed up this animation, we actually don't even need to worry about our visibility instantly hiding it because it still looks really good. You can see I can type and you can see it's perfectly swapping out exactly like I want. It's looking really, really good. Now, if we wanted to fix the problem for if we had a longer animation, like let's say it's a one second animation, it's obviously so long that it disappearing is quite jarring. It doesn't look great. What we can do is we can add in here a transition behavior, and we can say that we want to have a discrete transition. This allows us to transition on properties like display none or visibility in our case. So we'll come in here with a visibility property just like that. So now when I type, you can see one fades out and the other fades in and same thing here. So if we wanted to have them cross fading over top of each other, for example, if our animation was slower, that's exactly how we would do that. And let's come in here, speed up our animation. And now we can see what that looks like. And you can see now we have them fading in and out, which is pretty much exactly what the Discord input looks like. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see how to build the full Discord CSS clone and really improve your CSS skills to the point where if you see this particular thing, you can just tackle it yourself without having to watch any tutorials, then I highly recommend checking out my CSS simplified course. It'll be linked down in the description below. I just updated the whole course and it's currently on sale when this video goes live. So if you're interested, I highly recommend checking it out because this is the lowest price that it'll be. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.